Ah, yes, membership site owners, we have two main roles in our business, don't we? We're getting members and keeping members, keeping them longer, keeping them happy, keeping them staying and paying. Now, in this video, I'm going to go through the four main pillars of cancellations, why people leave or your what causes your churn rate, plus the main driver of churn in your business. Hi, my name's Neil Stafford. I've been selling online since 1998 and running membership sites online since 2003. Today, I have the privilege of working with membership site owners around the world as well as still running my membership site. So in this video, like I said, I'm going to go through the four main pillars of churn, what causes those cancellations. I'm going to give you the one main driver of churn in your membership business, plus how you can address these to increase your retention. So without further ado, let's go to the uh, the whiteboard. Let's start a new board here. Right. Okay, then. So we're going to look at those uh, Four pillars and the one main driver. So excuse my drawing. I am, he says, no Picasso. Oh, so we we'll, uh, we won't do that. We'll do it like that. Look at that. I've learned that if you stop, you get a straight line. And we'll go across this one. There we go. Now, we do need to draw another box in here. So you want to grab a piece of paper and follow me through. No laughing at my drawing so you know what causes uh cancellation and churn oops let's uh see if i can that does say churn believe it or not in my language it says churn so the first one we shall look at is communication The second pillar that causes churn is your welcome or your onboarding, you know, your new member onboarding. Third main reason for cancellation or churn, I call it your membership stroke market fit. How well you fit into that market. And your final one, what colour should we use? We'll use a bit of an orange for this one. I'll call breakage. I'll come back and explain these in a second. So there are the four, four main pillars that cause cancellations or churn. However, there is one big main driver of churn, and we'll call that passive. I shall come back to those as we work through it. Right, so let's have a look at... Uh, I need to move my video out of the way so you, I'm not covering anything. So communication. So communi communication can be lack of or even too much. So as people join your membership site, you know, the, you, you aren't keeping in touch with them enough, letting them know what's going on, what's coming up, what a great decision they've made. But you can also over-communicate with people where they go, my word. And I see this, it goes in line with the welcome and onboarding, as in, they're sending emails every day saying, do this, do this, do this, do this. So that's too much communication uh, with your with your members. Secondly, uh, there can be a mismatch. So you've communicated out to the market. They've joined and they thought, oh, hang on a minute. This site isn't for me. So I'll give you an example. We ran a, a, a membership site for a long, long time, 17 was it 17 years? Yeah, 17 years. How about that? And um, it was for people who coach and run junior and youth soccer teams. So the important one there is junior and youth. So it wasn't for adults. And it was amateur. It wasn't for professionals. Now, sometimes we had coaches who wanted to coach professionally join and leave quite quickly because it was a site aimed at enthusiastic parents, those people, those unsung heroes, as we call them, who uh, gave up their time at weekends and during the week to help the kids and run the team. So lack of communication, mismatch in the communication. So they've joined and it's not the place they thought it could be. You know, you could even overpromise in your communication. Yeah, so they join and go, oh, this isn't really what they said it was. Or I was expecting X, Y, Z, and I've got A, B, C. So one of the causes of churn, one of the causes of cancellation is your communication or lack of or misunderstanding within your communications. Next one, your welcome or onboarding. And I can't even remember. I must have used that one. Was it that one? 
Well, we'll use that one. There we go. You're welcome all on boarding. So, <laughs> none at all. You wouldn't believe the number of membership sign owners who I've worked with who, uh, let's see if we can come back on here a second. So, number of membership site owners who I've worked with who just don't have any onboarding or welcome at all. So people join and they're straight into the membership site. That's like being dropped in the middle of a freeway or a motorway with all the cars whizzing past you at 100 mile an hour. So people join, they go, I don't know what's going on here. You've got a community that's buzzing. They come into the communicate, community and they feel mismatched or, or left out. So let's go back. Uh, let me move my video. So have a good, a strong welcome uh, onboarding process. Um, the overwhelmed in your onboarding process and you don't meet them where they are. And I'll explain what that is right now. So don't meet where they are. So the overwhelmed and don't meet where they are. What you got to remember is when people join your membership site, They've joined for a reason. They want to get a result. They want to belong. They want to get an answer to questions that they've had. So they've joined on this side here. And they've joined your site. And all they see is a brick wall that they need to get over to get to, you know, the sunny side. Now, if when they join, you say, hey, thanks for joining. Look at all this stuff that we've got for you. Look at everything you need to go through to get those answers. All they're going to see is a brick wall that is going to get higher and higher. That is a brick wall, by the way. You wouldn't want me building a wall for you, would you? A brick wall that's getting higher and higher and higher, and they'll go, this is too much, and they will leave. Again, don't meet them where they are. So they might be able to get halfway up the wall, but not across. You may have some people starting right down here. This is where you're onboarding, some questionnaires, some self-selection that they click and tick box and say where they are so you can direct them to part of your site which can help them get to the next step okay it's that next step you need to get them to and that's why when we have onboarding with clients i have you know the the warm welcome the great expectations and the quick wins all that is done within the first hours and days of people joining your site. So they don't hit that brick wall and they don't think, you know what, I'm in the wrong place and cancel. So next one, membership market fit. What is that? So again, this comes back to what we said before. You could over promise and they'll join and it's not what they were expecting. You haven't got what they felt they were going to see when they joined your membership site. Um, the price benefit might not be there. Again, they've joined, um, they see your content, and in their mind, their perceived uh, value that they're getting is not does not equate the price that they are paying. Um, newbies versus experienced. So let me give you a good idea of this. So if somebody joined a site and your site was aimed at people who were had experience in your topic and they join and it's a lot of new people or how to get started information or basic information, those experienced people are going to leave and vice versa. If you're attracting a lot of new people into the market and into your membership site, but your content is aimed for people who have got experience, then they are going to they're going to leave. Let me give you again a prime example of membership market fit. There's two here. So I'll go back to my junior soccer coach site again. There's two main camps um, in junior football or soccer. Uh, competitive, and I call it it's just a game. Now, the underlying um, fundamental rule with both of these camps is the kids have got to enjoy it. However, one of the camps recognizes that it's a sport. You keep score. There's winners and losers. That's why we have a league. The other camp is, listen, everybody gets a game. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Um, we're here to enjoy ourselves. Now, here to enjoy ourselves is probably the wrong statement to, to use because both camps the fundamental rule is the kids have got to enjoy it. But there's two approaches. So junior soccer coach was the, it's competitive. There's winners and losers. We're going to put the best team out to win. Now, if somebody joined us who came from the environment of, it's just a game, the score doesn't matter, we're going to rotate the, the team so everybody gets a game, there, there's a mismatch there. It doesn't, it doesn't equate to what they were expecting. 
The same with my recurring revenue insider. You know, recurring revenue insider is the membership site for membership site owners. Recurring Revenue Insider. This is for people who have a membership site up and running. So if it's for people who are looking to start a membership site or build a membership site from scratch, this membership isn't for them. Now, I've spent many years helping people start membership sites. Um, I've got the scars to prove it. But now the Recurring Revenue Insider is for people who have got a membership site up, they've got some traffic, they've got a handful of members or more and want to grow. So if somebody joined looking for help to start a membership site, it isn't the right place. So if they joined, they would leave quite quickly. So the, the next area is breakage. Now, this is this is systems, this is operational. You know, this is you know the support. They send in a support ticket and it takes days to get answered. Um if they can't get the password or or username easily retrieved. They have problems with the downloads or the videos don't play. Um Let's have a look. They, they post a question uh, in your community, which doesn't get answered. All those will drive people to cancel, which will increase your churn rate. So they are, he says, they're the main four pillars that we find drive cancellations and churn in a business. However, there is one other you saw on my chart, the passive, passive cancellations or passive churn. They are probably the biggest driver of churn in most membership site businesses and the passive churn is when cancel when your credit cards or your members credit cards fail for whatever reason and there was a recent industry survey and i think it was as high as 69 69 and a half percent of people um, had no follow-up in place for when members credit cards failed you know they could fail for expiry date they could have changed cards. They could have canceled the card. It might have been over the limit when they tried. They do 69.5% of membership site owners didn't have a systematic follow up in, pray, in place to win back those members. And Rick Curley did a, um, a survey and found that um, I did write this down. He says it was 68. There we go. 68.7% of passive cancellations where a credit card has failed could be won back with a systematic follow-up process in place. Please, 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 he says, do not rely on those three emails that go out from your, you know, your credit card process. Hey, cards failed, coming updates. Hey, cards failed, coming updates. And the final one, hey, cards failed, coming updates. Okay, at the very least, go in and edit them. And then if you have a, a follow-up process in place, like it said, up to 68, 68.7% of passive cancellations can be recovered with the right follow-up process in place. And if you go back to the site, I did a video on this, how we say, save over 60% of uh, credit passive credit card fails with a follow-up process, which can be done online only, offline only, or a combination of the two. So I hope you found that useful. Go back and have a look in your business to see where your cancellations are coming from. I'll be very surprised if the biggest driver of cancellations that you have or churn is through passive cancellations. And that is probably the number one area that you can go in and fix now with a follow-up process in place to win back those people to increase your retention in your business. And then I would go and have a look at your onboarding and welcome sequence to see if you can um, improve that, get people engaged more, don't overwhelm them, um, don't, uh, don't try and force them to do something which is not where they are right now. But at the very least, Go back, have a look at these four areas and see where in your business you can improve it now to reduce your cancellations, reduce your churn and increase your retention. So got any questions? Love to hear from you. Post them below. We'd like to know more about how we can help you increase your membership business by attracting your perfect prospects, converting them to happy paying members and keeping those members staying and paying for longer. Just type the word. If you're watching the social, just put info into the comments and I'll send you all the details. Or you can send me an email, info at thetrainingvault.com. Put the word info, please, and I'll send you all the details. I'll speak to you soon.